I'm Bouncy in now. A, I think it's Lapa to Rohingya. So it's all shooting up for the protest. So there's Stop Rohingya leaving the A. Oh, start oh, with, sorry? Start from here, start from there, yeah. I'm not sorry, Stop Rohingya. George Galloway up there. <laughs>
big space. It started right here in the Pitney Square in Bradford with you guys. Let me now give a warm welcome to Bradford's MP, David Green. Sorry, David Green. Thank you very much. And, uh, and thank you for coming. It is back in a great place. You know, I need to say thank you to those who are waiting, and this is all been done at very short notice, um, but the response has been phenomenal. I suppose I should start with a, with a short, well, I suppose it's a confession. I am not a huge fan of rallies and marches. Um, I must say, I've been on my first year, but... I wrote this thing on me, I'm a pretty practical person. And my own favourite name, you know, this message campaign, find out those who have been to the power and getting in the room. And I would take 100,000 per hour. And the public before a private meeting with someone who can use this and make it a change. But this does not mean today and tonight here. Uh, it does not have some value, and I'll come back to that in a moment. The second thing that I would like to say whilst we're on a mission is that I am not here tonight because of the torture and persecution of so many Muslim thousands of miles away. I am here tonight because of the torture and atrocities committed against fellow human beings. And in fact, if Nijam will speak in the moment, Quite rightly said in my office uh, yesterday, I believe, and this is a crime against the humanity. And I, for one, would be here if the crimes were committed by so called, and they would only be so called Muslims against Buddhists, or by so called, they cannot really be Buddhists, against Muslims. Now, this is a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a the main cases, the main reason for divide throughout the ages have not been classed, they've just been to do with socialism or capitalism. The history of religion is about religious power and those without power. And throughout the ages, we have seen time and time again, whether it's in Cambodia, the South Park, whether it's in the July, whether it's in the Jim Crow state of the South America, of South United States, South America, South Africa, we have seen those with power persecute and victimize those without power. And so the fact that we did, in some cases, when those who were victimized at the same time as we have the best example of that, the divine state of Israel, they too become the first person of the minority. Now the Hingen, I first got to know the Hingen uh, four or five years ago when we were approached, I was at that time working at Rapid uh, City on integration of the work and community cohesion work and I was approached by Housing Association who was in the Gateway Program and contracted to resettle the Rohingya. That was not something I have to tell you that was widely accepted by all parts of the community. But it was the right thing to do. And they were, as so many times in Bradford, they were welcomed. People from afar, whether fleeing persecution or not, we were welcomed into Bradford, and that is in the history of Bradford that we should really be proud of. And my own wife and the rest of the house, this is Charles, Roma, the Silent City, refugees, also then had the Rohingyans, and that's quite a client group, I'm sure you'll agree. Another client group, the client support when they first arrived. The original campaign, of course, is not to do with the apostatism, but I'm about to do with a diabolical and shameful treatment of the Rohingyans in the Bangladesh camps. 
and we can play hard on that. And we still need it right now from the ground into the team with us. When the tournament goes back, to see the minister and to ensure that that particular message, irrespective of what happened in Burma, is brought home. This is not, for those who aren't aware of this issue, a new issue. And the treatment in particular of the healings in the back of this account for years and years, hundreds of thousands of them, is treated not only on the Bangladeshi government, but on the international community that has stood by and let it happen for so long. Now, uh, I said that I'm a practical person, and yes, I could be here tonight and I couldn't speak to you. But we've been to so many things, and how many times have people here looking around the audience? We've been to the Palestine events, and we've been to the Kashmir events, and there's a sense of frustration and anger that nothing is true. But also taking the fact that uh, I've also taken the fact that uh, I've contacted the Foreign Office. The issue is that quite difficult by the fact that there is a separate minister for Burma and a separate minister for Bangladesh. Fortunately, the minister for Burma is the Liberal Democrat and I believe it's his office. And there has been a formal statement put out by the Foreign Office. So I've got my letter to the Foreign Office which went last week. I have also got the response from the Secretary of State. And the good news, although we've seen such insipid reactions in the past from the United Nations, the good news is that the Foreign Office statement refers to the Special Rapporteur for Burma, who has sent out a strong message condemning all that is happening and is looking for a return of the and for those who are responsible for the atrocities to be brought to justice. I started by saying I'm not a great fan of the invitation because I want to see things actually achieved. But it was referred to a moment ago that the value, that the value of today is that it does send out a message. It sends out a clear message. In our own lives, we know the loneliest of times are when we feel alone, hundreds of miles, directly, but also, of course, through our platonic union, the person is aware of your issues, is prepared to stand up for you, and will not let the atrocities go by quietly. Thank you. on this issue, I'll tell you why. There are huge oil reserves in Burma, as well as them, as well as minerals, and our government is hoping that by staying quiet, not criticising at this key point in time, that our British businesses will get those deals. So we're all here to say, human beings matter more than profit. Of the Muslim people in the country. 
we need all the concerned international organizations not just to condemn and call on the Myanmar regime to rapidly stop the genocide and widespread and systematic violation of human rights of the innocent Muslim people of Myanmar, but to be firm and treat this matter as red alert. The new wave of violence against Muslims in Myanmar, which has led to the mass brutal killing of hundreds of innocent civilians, destruction and burning of mosques and houses and forceful expulsion of people from their homes has shaken up human sentiment and caused deep concern and anticipation for action from responsible organizations and representatives. The delay by UN once again raises eyebrows on its powers and raises concerns about the loyalty. In spite of Amnesty International and Human Watch alerting them, the government of Myanmar refuses to recognize the Rohingya Muslims who it claims are not native and classifies them as illegal migrants who migrated to Myanmar as early as the 8th century. Myanmar's president said the only solution to the plight of the Muslim Rohingya community is to send nearly one million Muslims, which is one of the most persecuted Muslim minorities to refugee camps run by the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. However, the UN Refugee Agency has stopped the idea of putting up refugee camps to accommodate the Rohingya community. We look at history, the Holocaust, the genocide, and globally peace organizations now explore the challenges of preventing genocide in the 21st century. So, while the Bosnia and Rwanda genocide are still afresh in our minds, the question is, how can this mass massacre be allowed to be carried so far? Where is the media? Why are the issues not highlighted? And one of the reasons is that the journalists and press are not allowed in the affected area. It should be a moral responsibility for the UN and superpowers to swiftly respond to mass atrocities, humanitarian crises, and support refuge streaming across borders. Increased pressure on UN from our government about the Rohingya's current situation is a necessity to protect Rohingya's raising strong voice and putting pressure on my government to end violence and state-sponsored genocide by the ruling party in Arakan. The government claims it is ending the commitment and gives a commitment to ending ethnic fight and abuse. But however, it still goes on. That is just a camouflage. We have seen recently the worst human crime reported where both bodies are chopped as vegetables. The hate of vicious and grime. Baba Sakurullah, the children are now being taken in the same way and tortured in the same way as well. We all agree, and that's what we need to press out today, that we need to press the Burmese government to take a stance and take the responsibility of its citizens. However, since the June violence, thousands of Rohingya continue to have fled to neighboring Bangladesh, where they have faced pushback from the Bangladeshi government in violation of international law. Human Rights Watch witnesses Rohingya men, women, and children who arrive on shore and pleading for mercy to be going on land and to take refuge were refused. They were sent back on their wooden, unworthy boats to go back. They couldn't go back to Burma because if they did, they would have been shot by the Burmese. So they had no choice and most of them were lost and drowned during that journey. Serious talks are much needed with the Bangladeshi government to ensure that right support is given and allowed. But the Bangladeshi government is resistance of all aid because it thinks that... Can you please say yes? It thinks that if Bangladesh got aid from this then that would be an attracting factor for the refugees. As political parties to unify and to use the sources and resources and putting pressures at the highest level is our responsibility of each political party. We each have to ensure that the MPs, ministers, government, 
are constantly working towards this cause. We would like to see people of all races, religions, color or creed from any places of worship to come forward and join hands in bringing peace and harmony. To say enough is enough to these barbaric killings, no more. Allow freedom for the Rohingya children as we want freedom for our own children. And in the end, on behalf of my party, I'd like to say that Labour councillors have already taken an initiative to write and lobby the leader of the party, Ed Miliband, to ensure accountability and action on this matter as strong opposition and support in Parliament. We will write to our shadow cabinet members to ensure their immediate attention. Our own discussions with Lord Nazir already assures me that he is also dealing with this matter as we have this rally. And as from that I said, no doubt from today, right here, from this platform, it will grow bigger and bigger, and inshallah, the cause of the Rohingya Muslims will be fulfilled. And now, with the e-petition that is going around, um, we as Labour Council are also effectively pursuing this matter and lobbying and hoping that soon we get the signatures of 100,000 to take this matter into Parliament. And now I will introduce you to the Bradford Rohingya community who moved to the UK in 2009. As you can see, they're all standing here on my right hand side. A certain percentage first came to live in my world. I since have been in regular contact with them. Okay, I will have to carry on. Thank you, Sandra. You're very kind. Right, I've been in regular contact with them. And during my year as Deputy Lord Mayor, we raised an event, a ladies-only event at the Mason Centre in 2009, where MEPs and MPs and councils were then lobbied as well. But I know for certain by looking at you all here, looking at the spirit... The I was born in 1982 in Arkan Estate in Myanmar. So far I remember that I many times for giving money to the Nasaka camps. I was nine years old in 1991. Clearly I remember that Nasaka army forcibly entered in one of our neighboring family and took one lady to their camp. Rape, torture, looting. 150,000 Rohingya people fled from Arkham and entered in Bangladesh. At that time, my father was also fled from Arkan, including my family members. He has started another tertiary life in refugee camp in Bangladesh. The government of Bangladesh has started falsely. Back to Arkan about two or three years and continue it up to 2000. After that, we made, we made a strong protest of forced pushback. The government appointed some refugee criminals doing this pushback who are known as Mazi. In the refugee camp, their torture was indescribable. They looted money and many things. I formed an youth group in the refugee camp to protest the forced pushback and resist the Mazi in 2002. The Majis and the government officer opened fire against the Rohingya youth group in 2004. And three of our members lost their lives. After that, the government filed a case against us. A result of, as a result, some of our youth group members fled from the camps. However, we did not stop our youth movements in the camps. At night, Suddenly you hear your Rohingya neighbor's house crying of a woman asking for help. Followed by a group of rakhine young people in short pants setting fire on your Rohingya neighbor's house and knife is yours. You have no time to spare. You leave behind your possession. You took your family in your boat and got on the river and you found, you found out you are the luckiest one you got shelter in the neighboring country. You can to tell people what happened on your way, though you see many men, women, especially, especially uh, their children. Especially a child died, you could not forget who could not get up from the mud to catch up her parents. During the storm death, the unfortunate Rohingya will not have their story to tell to her future generation. This seems like this seems like a history of Hitler's Germany in the last century. No, 
it is in asia in a buddhist country in the remote control corner of arkan of burma the burmans authorities should immediately release details of details rohingya allow access to family members humanitarian agencies and release anyone not charged with a crime recognized under under international law in which there is credible evidence Burma in 1982 citizenship law effectively effectively denies Burmese citizenship to the Rohingya population estimated 1 people 1 million people on July 2 12 Burmese president Tain Sen said the only solution to the secretarial strife was to expel the Rohingya to other countries or to camps overseen by the United Nations refugee agency Tain Sen said we will send them away if any third country would accept them burma's new human right commission led by the chairman win mira and ethnic arkan has not played played an effective role in monitoring abuses in arkan state human right was said in july 11 assessment of the secretarial violence the commission reported on no government abuses claim all humanitarian needs we have been made and fail to address rohingya citizenship and the persecution the burmese government needs to urgently amend its citizenship law to end official discrimination against the rohingya president pensin cannot credibly claim to be promoting human rights while calling for the exploitation of people because of their ethnicity and the religion the government has restricted access access to affected areas particularly rohingya areas crippling the humanitarian response united nations and humanitarian aid workers have faced arrest as well as threat and intimidation from the local arkan population which perceives the aid agency as biased towards the rohingya government restriction have made some areas such as bale south of mondo inaccessible to humanitarian agencies the authorities should immediately grant unfettered humanitarian access to all affected population and begin work to prevent future violence between the communities the government should assist both communities with property restitution and ensure all of the displaced can return home and live in safety on hearing about the growing atrocities atrocities and mass murder i left for bangladesh after collecting aid from relatives most of our family are in camps or in burma we did know whether they are alive or dead the location of some is still unknown and we fear of their life with the funds collected our registered families living in camps could buy basic things like clean water food and medication but the situation is dire and desperate for the rohingya community since then the persecution on rohingya has been steadily increased to such an extent that people cannot move even from village to village without authorities approval and marriage ban was imposed taking years to get married possible only when the authorities approve it professional higher education and movement to any other state we are totally banned thousands have been killed for trying to sneak out the ban and so on many rohingya were forced to leave the country causing a lot diaspora in many parts of the world the largest being in saudi arabia pakistan and bangladesh total in about 1.5 million as the bradford rohingya community we have written to the william hook mp secretary of state of state for foreign and commonwealth affairs and the high commissioner for bangladesh london there has not there has not been anything like the international response that would be expected expected for a crisis on this scale action needs to be taken now to ensure aid can be delivered arrest and human rights abuses are stopped and people are allowed to return safely to their homes britain britain used to take 
to lead in mobilizing the international community to respond to human rights and humanitarian crisis in Burma. We need you to resume that leading role again. I urge you to use every diplomatic and legal tool at your disposal to help bring an end to the current crisis. Including Britain must draw international attention to the current crisis by a strongly condemning the blocking of humanitarian aid, the human rights abuses committed by the police, army and security forces, and be by rejecting proposal for all Rohingya to be expelled from the country. Britain must also push for discussion and action at the United Nations Security Council and other UN United Nations bodies Britain must, must mobilize the international community to pressure President Pence to allow aid to be delivered to the 100,000 displaced people. Lives are being lost every day, while the UK, European Union and the rest of the international community fail to take sufficient action to end this crisis. But the world should be putting its spotlight on Myanmar. It should not so eagerly welcome democracy in a country that leaves thousands of stateless men and women floating in a river. Their are corpses washing up its shores. After they have been revived in and driven from a land in which their family have lived for centuries. This is not a sectarian violence. It is a state-supported ethnic cleansing and the nation of the world are not pressing Myanmar leaders to stop it. We urge the leaders to stand up and speak up for this <coughs> inhuman justice that prevails. We thank you all for supporting us and are grateful that so many of you have turned up. May Allah reward you all for this and we hope you will not let us this matter be washed away. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Muhammad Najam. It's actually quite emotional to listen to someone's life story, a real life story of his accounts of his life. I now would like to introduce Shajida. Shajida also lives in my ward. Shajida was born in the Bangladeshi refuge camp. So can you imagine that all her life she has lived in a camp, in a destitute situation, whereas you all, she will tell you herself. Shajida has been very brave to come forward and give you her own encounter. Thank you, Shajida. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am 17 years old and we are six children in my family. My parents fled out of the city from Burma and lived in the Yapara refugee camp, Bangladesh refugee camp, for 18 years. More than 1,000 people lived in Nayapara refugee camp where I was born without a shelter, clean water, and electricity. In the refugee camp in Bangladesh, children do not have the right to education. We were not authorized to go outside the refugee camp because if people would discover that we were from Rohingya community, then they would kill us. Many people were killed. Many people experienced extreme torture. And women and children were battered and sexual abuse. As a child of my age, I saw horrible things. People from my community died in my presence. I was traumatized and all the time I was scared to go out. These memories are still in my mind. In 2009, my immediate family came in the UK. As we were the few registered refugees, I think how my life would be if I was still in a refugee camp. And my heart cries for the young children and women still living there. In Burma, the lives of the young girls and women are in concentrate. The women are victims. They are physically tortured and abused if found that they are from the Rohingya community. Majority of the Rohingya women are torn to return home and women are hiding. I ask 
you at the camps and the women life. Acceptable. I ask you, you are the kind on the human life acceptable. No one wants their daughter, mother, sister, or to go through where young girls and women are facing in Rohingya community. In Bangladesh refugee camp, the girls and women are leading horrible lives. They have no resources or facility to lead a normal life. No education, no food, and no money. They are not allowed to get married. The ones that hide their marriages from the officer have no supported if needed during a childbirth. The girls are undernourished and have no medical facility on age. My uncles, aunties, some of our family member, members are missing. Unity of humanity. Not be silent. We will not be apologetic if Muslims happen to be the victims of persecution or terrorism, because that's another byproduct of the so-called war on terrorism. Where they say, don't talk about politics and don't talk about Muslims being persecuted. We say we will not be silent and we will stand up for whoever is oppressed, whether they are Muslim or not, regardless of their faith or race. And we stand against any oppressor, whether they are Muslim or not, regardless of faith or race, because we are consistent in our principles. I am proud to introduce the next speaker who has been consistent in his principles. When he got elected, he promised to put Bradford on the map, and he has done so already. Let me introduce to you the first parliamentarian who raised the issue of Burma on the radio, on the TV, on Twitter, in social media. So already the message is going out. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Fellow members of Parliament, members of the Bradford City Council, Distinguished elders, brothers and sisters, comrades and friends, Assalamu Alaikum. And Ramadan Mubarak to all the faithful Muslims here and across the Ummah. We're very glad that there are councillors here and even talking here. Actually, I began to wish that they had organized this themselves. Because if they had, we wouldn't have had all the trouble with the emergency planning department that we have had in getting permission to organize this rally this evening. And we're very glad that the Liberal Democrat MP has lobbied the government, especially as he is the government, lobbying yourself but to be a very easy exercise in your own party ought to produce results. That's why I'm hoping that after the statements this evening, the silence of Nick Clegg and David Cameron on the massacre of the will come to and end. Very glad also that Labour members are lobbying their leader. Well, I just lobbied my leader. And we are already condemning the massacre of the Muslims in Burma. And I'm looking forward to hearing Ed Miliband do the same after the statements that have been made. why there's been a silence from so many quarters and I intend to go through them one by one. It's an innocent game. That's why, that's why it's a mistake to condemn and blame the government of Bangladesh. Of course, 
It's shameful that This is my second point. We don't want any more Muslim refugees being driven over other people's borders. The Rohingyans have the same right to live in Burma as any Buddhist, as any Christian, as any Hindu, as much right as Aung San Suu Kyi has to live in Burma. They are Burmese people and they must be protected inside Burma in their own homes. And that brings me to the third point. How long we campaigned for the release of Aung San Suu Kyi. How we cheered upon her house arrest release how we cheered her as she achieved the position of Nobel Laureate. How we welcomed her in Parliament, rolling out the red carpet there and in Oxford University. I'm saying this to Aung San Suu Kyi. Your silence on this massacre is a mark of shame upon you. And we are counted. The fourth reason why the British government, the Liberal Democrat Conservative Coalition government is silent on this massacre is, as Salma said in the introduction to this meeting, because Burma is dripping with riches, with oil, with gems and riches that the British government and British companies hope to get a share of. And we say this, there's blood on those diamonds, there's blood on that oil. It's time for the British government to get tough with the junta. <laughs> but lastly, lastly, you wouldn't expect me to miss this start. Where is the Muslim leadership in the world? Where are the Arab governments, the richest governments in the world? Where are they? They're sending money and weapons to other countries, encouraging Muslims to kill Muslims, but they haven't lifted a finger to defend the Muslims in Burma from the massacre against them. They're meeting now. The so-called AIC, it's meeting now in so-called Saudi Arabia. What's their demand? Compassion. They ask the Bangladesh government to show compassion and mercy among the Burmese refugees. Compassion and mercy is not what we're looking for. We're demanding that people's rights are respected. And the criminal in this story is not the government of Bangladesh, but the military dictatorship in Burma. And the leaders of the Arab world and the Muslim world should be telling that military junta, stop the killing of the Muslims or you'll have to deal with us. You'll have to in the entire Oma, namely the Rohingya people of Burma. So, in conclusion, I'm very proud of this great gathering here today. So much so 
I'm going to repeat it in Manchester at 4 p.m. on Wednesday. We're taking this campaign around this country and we hope people join us. But whether they join us or they don't, we'll be raising our voices in defense of the Muslims in Burma. <laughs> I'm going now to raise funds for the Palestinian people in Adam's restaurant at 7 o'clock. All of you are welcome to join me, although I'll be busy if you all do. We will never remain silent where injustice is being practiced. I'm very proud of my comrades who organized this event. And I'm especially proud of you, Brad Cordian, for turning out in such massive numbers. It'll be hard, you know, all the way to Akira, it will be hard. All the way to Burma, it will be hard. It'll be on the television this evening in Dhaka, where many, many people in Bangladesh are ashamed of their government for turning these refugees away. But the last point is this. We all pay for something called the BBC, the Push and Blair Corporation. I don't know about you, but I see plenty on the BBC every night, five times a night from Syria, but I never saw one thing from Burma. And when you phone up the BBC to complain, they hang the phone up. So, well even, actually, even Rupert Murdoch, even him, criminal though he is, <laughs> is not as bad as the Bush and Blair Corporation. The difference is we're paying for the Bush and Blair Corporation. So I want every one of you to write or phone, to send your complaints to the BBC, to demand that they cover this issue so that the vast majority of people in this country can see the truth. Long live the Muslim people of Burma. Long live the Allah. Ramzan I'm going to be there to really thank for your team. I know it's uh, uh, quite a tough deal here after George Galloway, so I'll make it very brief. First of all, congratulations to you. You know, when we watch the news and we see the newspapers, we hear what's negative about You've shown what is possible from our breakfast. And I salute your compassion. And above all, I ask uh, a task from you. I want something from you, brothers, if you pay attention to this. I want you all to raise your hand if tomorrow you're going to write to the Bangladeshi High Commission. Who's going to write to the Bangladeshi High Commission? We require thousands of letters. I met the Bangladeshi Prime Minister last week. I mentioned the Black in purpose. And what she said to me, she said they're not Bengali. They're not, they're not Bengali. The sign of a Muslim is like a Muslim comes in need of help. You turn them away because they're not Bengali. I say shame on Sheikh Hasina. I say shame on Bangladesh. I say shame on you. We can show what's great about our faith. We can show what is great and compassionate about our community. 
And we can only do it if you all pledge to stand with me. Stand with George Galloway. To stand with the Muslims of Bradford. To write to the Bangladeshis and say your silence will not be tolerated. And inshallah, Ummah Channel and Ummah Global Relief gives its pledge that within the next six weeks we will go to Bangladesh with or without a visa and we will help these brothers and sisters. As you can see, rally has been a great success. The work starts now. Make sure you write to the Bangladeshi government, write to the Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Minister, the Foreign Secretary, and Ed Minifan as well. Please, brothers and sisters, salute you, I salute your courage, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help the Muslims of Syria, help the Muslims of Palestine, Syria, of Palestine. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you so much for being here. That was our final speaker. Just as I could stand for witness that all of you are here, believe me, in Sarah Dave Christmas, they are witnesses that you came, you gave your time, you gave your compassion, you gave your energy for other people. Please give generously the Olive Lantern Club is here with their buckets. We will send aid directly to the people there. We also give our salutations and encouragement to the people of Bangladesh. Their leaders have let them down. Their leaders have let the Burmese Muslims down. But I can tell you this. There are people who are risking their lives. Shall treat those refugees. The refugees who are being shot at by the Burmese troops who are also being arrested by the force of Bangladesh for assault refuge. Yet poor fishermen are risking their livelihood by giving them shelter. This story is only beginning and we are here determined to play our part. Thank you so much. Keep up the fight. Everyone has got a mobile phone here. Text your message them know what you heard here today. Anybody on Twitter, on Facebook, send the pictures, send the messages out. Let's get this message worldwide. Thank you very much for being here.